tick bell. Now, when you look at the, my notes on the screen, I have uh, the definition and the working of an electric bell introduction. So we start. An electric doorbell is a simple circuit that triggers a sound on the completion of a circuit by pressing the button. So when you press the button, it, it completes the circuit. We are going to see how that works. And it, in, it is this simplicity that makes the doorbell such a marvel. The simple device is in the doorbell, put a scientific principle of electromagnetism into action. It is in a useful way. So in order to understand the operation of an electric bell, you should find, in order to understand the, the principle of an electric bell, you should first need to understand what is an electromagnet. So it works on a principle of electromagnet. Well, to put it into simple words, an electromagnet is basically a type of magnet in which the magnetic field is produced with the help of an electric current. So when there is an electric current and winding, you can see this is a, mag a magnet. The magnet is labeled E. So when we have some winding, that is a copper, it can be a conductor winding, a copper winding or something. So when we have a winding around on it, so it uh, and electricity passed on that, it produced an uh, uh, um, um, electromagnet. So the, uh, we, if well, Put in a simple words, an electromagnet is basically a type of magnet in which a magnetic field is produced with the help of an electric circuit. Now, when an electric, when an electrical, oh. Uh -huh. Uh, this this class is a combined class. Somebody is saying, saying that you are not seeing your class members. This is a combined class. Uh, this, let me write it there. I'm just writing a message there so that we proceed. Okay. Okay, so we had already said that the principle of uh, the, the working principle of an electrical bell it works on the principle of a, a magnet that uh, that uh, it it works uh, on a principle that a magnet in which a magnet magnetic field is produced with the help of an electric current. So when an electric when any electrical influence when when so when any electrical influences electromagnet it works as a standard magnet. Now, generating magnetic fields. When the power generation, so when the power generation to an electromagnet stops, the production of the magnetic field also stops. So, so it is an electric bell. So an electromagnet form an important, so you can see here our electromagnet forms an important part with the armature, that is the spring, the amateur rod, the hammer, and the gong. So the image below shows the internal mechanism of an electric bell. So when we, we, we push this, the, the, the button K, you can see K here, K is the push button. We normally use a push button for an electric bell. So when we press the part K, so it means that 
and we normally say that a push button is normal a normally closed button so uh when we press this button uh, this push button it connects current meaning making this electromagnet ma ma making this magnetic or or, or uh, uh, magnetizing this thing so after magnetizing this this rod gets magnetized and it attracts it attracts the gong it may it, it it becomes magnetic this knob becomes magnetic and the moment it becomes magnetic it attracts it connects the circuit meaning knocking the gong this is called a gong a gong is a substance that is normally uh, uh put on an electric bell so in in, in your in your exam or in your examinations normally you, you'll be told to explain the working of an electric bell how does it work what are uh, its requirements or what does it need for operation you will be told to draw the circuit this is the basic circuit of an electric bell so this is the gong this is the circuit this is the magnet these are the coils and this is the push button and this is the power supply we can look at it now an electric source for example a battery can be used to power an electro to power the electromagnet used in an electric bell so the electric circuit is completed by installing a push switch which you can press to sound an electric bell so the switch also acts as a an a circuit the switch also acts as a circuit breaker that breaks the circuit so the moment you de-energize the switch meaning you press again the push button uh, it uh, it it normally it holds normally i've i've, I've talked about the, the working of a push button a push button is something that is normally normally open so the moment i push it completes the circuit it hits the gong and it energizes the magnet and then energizes this gong this knob and the knob uh, gets magnetic and attracts so the 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 facts of attracting you you know the working of a magnet any magnetic material attracts any metallic object so the moment it attracts it is hitting the gong and it makes the noise so that is the working principle of an electric bell you can see at that diagram so once the setup is completed when the the switch is pressed the circuit loop loop is complete which causes the elect, elect which causes the current to flow through the circuit so the arm which strikes the gong is connected to a spring at one of the end and the iron ball on the other end you can see that the, 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 this one is the arm and this is the iron ball so the iron ball once it gets magnetized it it, it attracts the, the gong and the process of attracting so it hits the gong and see in that diagram this is called the hammer or the striker so the arm the arm is attracted to the iron strip which is attracted to the electromagnet when the where, which is attracted to the electromagnet when the circuit is connected and the current flows through it. So why does this happen? Now we need to understand why it happens. This mainly because the magnetic field created by the electromagnet attracts the ion strip. The magnetic field, we have said, created by the electromagnet attracts the ion strip. When you look below here at this point A, I'm pointing with this red pointer, this point A, this is the magnet, this is the metallic strip, the metal strip. So, so this is how it happens. It mainly because the magnetic field created by electromagnet up, up, attracts the ion strip towards it when the current is complete. So when it's complete, it attracts this towards there. And after after attracting it, then the, the circuit is complete. Now this is the moment when you hear the ringing sound since the hammer hit is hitting the gong. So the, as it continues to, to, to attract, the hammer continues hitting the gong. So the, the attraction, the, 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 the magnetic attraction that occurs there allows this head or the striker to hit the gong. And that is how you will, you will hear the sound. And that is the simple working of an electric bell. Uh, meanwhile, as it rests, as uh, as its rest position, the hammer is held away from the gong on account of the spring attracted to its arm. So this is an anchored arm.
So that is the magnetic bell. So we have now the, the process of working of an electric bell. Now that you have an understanding of the important parts of electric bell, the step-by-step -step process of the working of an electric bell is described below. You can look at it. So the switch is pressed and current flows through the, the circuit. We had seen the circuit. So the moment you press the, press the switch, and we are saying the switch that no, is normally used in an electric bell is a push button switch. So the moment you press that switch, the current flows in the circuit. So the electromagnet is powered and generates a magnetic field that attracts the ion strip towards it. So the striker strikes the gong bell. The striker strikes the gong bell. When the striking arm strikes the gong, the contact is broken and current stops flowing through the circuit. That is, when the striker strikes the gong bell, when the stri striking arm strikes the gong, the contact is broken. The moment it, it, it strikes the gong, the contact is broken and the current stops flowing through the circuit. So it goes through the process again. Now, this causes the electromagnet to lose the magnetic field. So the connected strip arm um, turns the striker to its original set rest position. Now the contact is restored and the current flows through the circuit, provided the main switch is still pressed. So this process is repeated from the beginning to the end. So when I want to continuously ring this bell, when I want to continuously ring this bell, I know I, I'll keep on energizing the push button, that is energizing the circuit by pressing the push button. The moment I press the push button, power is run through. Power is, is run through the circuit and the circuit gets energized. So I move on. Now the bell alarm. The bell alarm is another thing that I want us to talk about. If you use a lamp with a motion sensor, or outdoor lighting, the original electrical switch is actually no longer necessary. So we have another type of alarm called the bell alarm. Uh, and, and when we use a uh, alarm with a motion sensor, we normally have some motion sensors for the outdoor, outdoor lighting. The original electrical switch is actually no longer necessary. So if you replace the switch with the circuit described here, the, uh, the, the acoustical signal will be generated each time the door, the outdoor lamp is switched on. So it is thus somewhere between an alarm and a doorbell. The operating principle is simple. So we need to know the operating principle of a, a, a bell alarm. Now the circuit that causes the voltage drop of only a couple of volts is simple. So the circuit that causes the voltage drop uh, is connected in series with the lamp as the circuit needs the DC voltage. Normally you need a DC voltage for the bell alarm. And that's why you realize that many people who do their projects, uh, who, 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 the students, uh, the university students who do projects, they normally need to uh, usually like using the bell alarm because it needs a very little voltage. So the current of the lamp is passed through the bridge rectifier. So the voltage drop across the circuit is determined by R, uh, R1, which is the resistor one, the function uh, C1, which is the capacitor one, as it uh, uh, C1 is to soothe the raw DC voltage. Note that this is not an example of a fixed rectification, but instead an averaging. For that reason, the voltage on C1 is lower than that of th that might expect. So you will see the circuit there. This is what we are talking about, about the, the this is for projects, for people who want to carry out projects uh, for making a bell alarm. This is the supply, which is a, 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 an AC supply. It is rectified using this bridge rectifier and, and, stepped, uh, and converted to a, a DC voltage that can be used by this electrical components that you can see here. So this is a capacitor one, capacitor two. These are resistors, these are another resistors. And these are buzzer for now making, the buzzer is used to produce that sound for making that sound. So depending on how much current the buzzer draws, 
you can increase the value of the resistor two. You can see the resistor two in order to extend the time. You can do this thing practically when you go to the lab by connecting this circuit, and you will hear the way it makes it, it produces the noise. So, this, depending on the lamp power, you can consider adjusting the value of resistor one. This will certainly be necessarily necessary if you use a 150 watt lamp or larger. This, is, this one is used for testing purposes. You test if your circuit is correct. So in this case, cut a value, uh, cut the value of the resistor one in half primarily because the power dissipation will otherwise be too large. So in the example described here, it is around three watts. So the bridge rectifier also deserves a special attention. You can see that these are this is all about electronics, bringing out, making that circuit electronically, and and, uh, and making sure that it works. So the large current, uh, the a large current flows briefly when the lamp is switched on. That is called A, and uh, that is, can see 250 volts and uh, and uh, an ampere of 1.5 amps. The bridge rectifier is adequate for the 10 watt lamp. This is called a test lamp. So you'll see those notes there. I'll be attaching these notes to your portal and you'll be able to see clearly what that means. Then the contact operated single circuit are units that are activated by opening and closing of the set of electrical contacts. So these contacts may take the form of a simple push button switches, press pad switches and magnetically activated read switch. So these are part of the, the, the applications of the electric bell that we have. So the security circuits output may take the form of some type of alarm sound generator, or may take the form of relay that can activate any external electrical device, and may be designed to give non-latching, self-latching, or one-shot output operation. So contact-operated security systems have many practical applications in their home in commercial buildings and in industry. They can be used to attract attention when someone operates a push switch or to give a warning when someone opens a door or threads on the pressure pad of, or tries to steal an item. So that is uh, now the bell. Normally the alarms we have, we have the bell alarm, we have the sounder that normally uh, sounds, uh, once somebody uh, tries to steal something or to break into a house, we normally have bell sounders that, that give an alarm. Those are now the bell alarms. The bell uh, and bell relays output circuit, that is the close to, uh, to operate circuit. These are the types of circuit. Is the simplest type of contact operated security circuit that consists of an alarm, that is the bell, or the buzzer or electronic siren sounder. It's normally also called the siren sounder or generator, ETC. So wired in series with an with a normally open or normally closed circuit. So that is the simple bell door type, closed uh, operate alarm circuit. You can see the bell it normally takes six volts. You can see the switch one, the switch two can be operated by two, two switches. And then we have the power supply that it can be a battery or even uh, an AC. So note that any desired number Rov, the number of switches can be wired in parallel so that the alarm operates when any of these switches are closed. This type of circuit gives an inherently non large type of operations and has the great advantage of drawing zero standby current. So the disadvantages of the basic figure one circuit is that it passes the full alarm current through the normally open operating switches. So we, uh, we, we have the normally open operating switches and they are wiring. So the switches must be fairly robust types and the wiring must keep fairly short if excessive wiring volts are to be avoided. This later point is of particular importance in security applications in which the circuit is used with several widely separated normally open switches. So we can look at the circuit. So now we have another type of circuit, which is called the relay aided non-latch or closed operator. You can now see we have the, the relay is there. The relay now holds. 
Now, this is this means that uh, for this alarm, it's normally used for the bell alarm, meaning that uh, when we are switching it on, maybe when there is a, a danger or somebody wanting to break into a house, you realize that the bell rings continuously. Unlike the doorbell that rings once and stops, the 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 the, the alarm the, the bell alarm normally rings continuously until it is switched off. So what happens is we normally have a relay. So the relay gives the hold on button. It's called a hold on button. It's called a hold on button. I want you to see this the way it looks like. Uh, good. So the moment you press this, this one will be used to hold it. So it holds it on. So that is the relay. The relay holds it on until that time that you come and press again so that you switch it off. So that is how the bell alarm works. So those are other the self-aiding, self-latching laws to operate the security alarm. Just changing the design and the bell is there to give the, the noise and the sound that is needed. Then the transistor aided latching, we are just having different substances to hold to hold on. We add the relay, we add the 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 the, the self uh, self energizing. We have the transistor aided and latching close to operate alarm. It is just the same thing, the same operation. The only difference is it is used to, using a transistor to hold on the circuit for that length of time that it needs. And then we have the SCR aided and latching close to operate alarm, the same same thing, but we are now using the SCR, which is there. Uh -huh. We have the self-aided latching close to operate alarm, we can see it there. Those are the types of circuits for the bell alarm. You can see now the improve, improved open to operate alarm draws uh, this micro ampere standby current, it draws a very little current in its operation, but the principle is still still the same. You can see now that one, uh, that is another one again, that is used as AND gate. So for those people who like projects, who would like to make projects, uh, so we have other types of circuits, like now the loop alarm circuit, this is another kind of circuit. So one type of contact operated alarm circuit that is widely used in large shops and stores. And also in domestic garages and garden sheds and garden sheds and is the so-called loop in which a long length of wire is run out from the alarm unit. So is looped through a whole string of to, to be protected items is used away that none of them can be removed without cutting or removing the wire and in, is then looped back to the alarm unit again to complete a closed electrical circuit. So the alarm sounds instantly in an attempt, in an attempt is made to steal any of the protected items by cutting the wire loop. So that is the loop circuit. So you can see how the loop circuit happens. So it loops. So the metering security case is there. You can see how it is, the, the outer part of it. So the loops are here so that it can be detected. So the moment somebody it tries to cut maybe the switch so that it can, it, it, it can go off. So the loop gives, uh, the, the, the loop is there and it can still continue powering the circuit. So that is an advanced type of the bell alarm circuit. So the improved version of the self latch loop alarm is there. So we are just repeating the same same things, but now we are putting the loop. You can see the loop outside there. Basic way of constructing an anti tamper switch is there. You can see we have the coil spring, the bond mate bonding material, the tactile keypad switch. The switch is normally held closely via the down downward pressure on the coil spring by the unit security case. So the BCB with mounting is there. So this siren sounder security circuit, those are, uh, that's another type of circuit. We said with the, the, uh, the, with the, the second one was the loop. So we also have the siren sound security circuit. 
Now, co contact operated security circuits can be easily can easily be designed to produce electronically generated sirene alarm sounds in the piezoelectric sounders or in the electromagnetic loud speakers. Such systems can be made to produce a variety of sounds. So at a variety of power levels and may be designed around various types of semiconductor devices. So we can see the diagram there, the sirene waveform generator, the output driver is there. So now those are the circuit diagrams now with all the components in it, the sirene waveform generator circuit, the on and off puzzles, uh, the, the, the pulses are seen there. So some of these things uh, are, 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 I've, done, I've given, I've posted uh, videos of how they work, of how they operate, even the wiring, how we wire the, the, the circuits, because most of the time you'll be told, draw a circuit diagram of, of wiring, maybe an alarm, an electric a bell alarm, or an electric bell, or the sirens or the sounders, you'll be able to know how to draw the circuits. So I've presented videos that norm will show you the working of the bells. Then we have, those are still circuits. For that, the gated sirene waveform generator, you can see the output, the input, the output. Those are still circuits. You can see them there. These are still circuits that will be needed to draw and remember them. And remember we are grounding every A, all the circuits must always be grounded. You realize there's something drawn like this and with a zero volts. So when it's written like that, so that is a, 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 that is a ground, meaning it is grounded to the earth to avoid any interferences and leakages to allow the leakages to go down to the ground. You have the speaker there. So those are the circuits of the basic bell alarm and the electric bell sounders. So I want to go. I want us to go to the next thing of the bell indicators. And before we go there, I would like people to at least highlight on something. Say something that we have gotten from this. So unmute your mics. Unmute your mics, boys. I'm seeing you around. So you joined us. Unmute your mic so that I can hear. So are people still in class? Seven. Samuel. I need to hear people talk. Boaz. Yes, Francis. Yes, Malim. You disappeared and you've come again. Yes. What happened? You, your bundles? We're finished. No, see bundles. Me and this is joining in. Uli, uli pata ume click uko x uko ju ikazima. Apa, apa na ni mnyani asi ina ni ni yonge ina sema you are disconnected. Same with this ah ni ni ni. We'll log again. Oh, so uli pata sanga. I didn't see you get away. Ni le pata ni ni ukengere so so ni ni really. Wah, kutoka hapo kote. So who was who, who had at least something? Samuel? Yes. Wewe naona at least ulikuwa. Eh, nimefuatilia kiasi. Eh, did you get uh, to understand the how the working of an electric bell? How it is how it works? Yeah. Lakini kwa hizo marilis. Mm. Marilis ndio Na sasa ile eleze kiasi vizuri ili mtu aelewe vizuri hapo kwa release. 
uh, relays aje unajua tumeongea about how uh, in a hold you know the main work of a relay the main work of a relay is to to hold i told you that an electric bell or a, an a bell alarm is operated using a, a push button na push button push button do you know how a push button looks like eh nilo una press alafu inarudi uki press unajua sio kama hizi switch zingine yeah. za kawaida zenye, zenye tunakwanga nazo zenye unawasha alafu ina inabaki hapo so for a push button the moment you press and you release your finger it means itatoka so an electric bell works in that way una, una, you, you, you can imagine of a, a, a bell yenye ina, inawasha ina iko ina imekwa double where uh, somebody is supposed to press that ako kwa mlango normally what happens mtu anafinya inalia inawacha si ndio so the main thing that the main thing that happens there is because of the the push button bell so when we want it to 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 sound continuously ama tunataka ilie ilie continuously without stop so the main thing that we do there ni ku include a relay so a relay a relay ni kitu kama ni kitu ngine in in a, in, a, in a create something called a, a hold on button a hold on button ni ile yenye ita hold instead of pushing the button na na ukitoa kidole inalia inawacha so the the whole the electric uh, the relay uh, brings about the principle of holding so the moment you press relay in a hold ina 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 inaweka kitu inaitwa ina lock so it holds that is that is normally in the alarms sasa kama hizo za security alarms tuseme for example somebody ameka alarm ama siren kwa nyumba yake ama kwa gari yake normally what happens wakati umeguza inalia continuously mpaka mtu akuje kuizima isn't it uh, so the work of the relay is to hold on to make sure that after you have pressed or after it, the circuit has been energized it still maintains there or it still maintains its position until you go to de-energize the the circuit again so i hope that one has explained your question yeah uh, Yes somebody else i want to hear from people i want to to make sure at least people are getting what i was saying can somebody else say something boys wengine wameweka tu listen only like kevin and grace you energize your speakers so that i can hear you Yes, so we wait for them to energize. I want to to bring up another presentation. Components of the electric circuit. That's what we had talked about, but now you can see them there. An electric bell now another diagram of that electric the push button that i was showing you now this one has his name so the main components of the electric bell are the important parts of the electric bell are we have the electromagnet which is here we have the armature we have the spring uh we have the spring we have the hammer and we have the gong so this is the armature and this is the spring the spring is there and the gong is here so uh we can see the push button there we can see the battery we can see the terminals where we join the circuit so the construction how do we construct we construct it one end of the armature winding is constructed to terminal one you can see terminal one is here and the other the other to the spring and you can see the spring the other to the spring the spring is here that is the spring which is mounted on the soft iron strip so the rod is attached to the armature the rod is attached to the armature and the free end of the rod carries a small hammer which strikes a bell which strikes a bell a very light spring is attached to the screw which is joined to the electric to the terminal t2 so the working of the electric bell we have already discussed we said 
that the moment you push this push button, the battery is energized, meaning the contacts are energized and it, it, it takes power or current to the magnet. The magnet has the north and the south pole. So the moment the magnet is there, the electric current goes through the magnet, it, it, pro, it, it produces the electromagnet force. So the, that it makes this thing to be an electromagnet. And the moment it is electromagnet, it attracts this. It attracts this ion sheet. You see it, it's called an ion strip. It attracts it. The moment it att attracts it, so the, the spring, the spring now uh, comes together and pulls the gong and makes the gong, the, 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 this striker, to hit the gong. So the moment it hits the gong, it produces the sound. It has a very basic way of working. And the moment you understand this concept, you will not have a problem because it will always help you to understand. And uh, its circuit is very simple, you can see. You know, we just need to draw a gong. And because in your examination, you can be told, draw and explain the working, the construction and working of an electrical, the, uh, bell or the, the, the circuit of an electrical and an electric bell. You need to draw this. This is the basic wiring of an electric bell. So electric doorbells now and how most of them look like. You can now see we have the dingo. Sometimes we love that sound. Now sometimes we hate it. But if there is one thing that it's the, the sounds behind it now, when someone's finger pushes the doorbell and I can hear it sound and impressively simple, pushes on the doorbell, we are, and then uh, the, the, then it is the science is of electromagnetism. We have already explained. So to be exact, just what happens when the doorbell goes, ding, then let's take a closer look. Now you can see what happens. You can see the heating of the gong. You can see how it, it, it works. So, uh -huh. Uh, those are just the stories, but it's all about the doorbells. So we have types of electric doorbells. We have the chamfer doorbells. These are the, 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 the circuits, the active circuit. Now you can see how it works. So this gong is hitting. The moment I press, though this is a finger, pressing the button, the push button. And the moment you press this push button, it is going to energize the, the, the gong and the gong will the, the striker and the striker will hit the gong. So these are the old uh, system uh, doorbells. You can see how they were made of, but these ones are the current ones. You can see how they look like from a distance. Most doorbells have what is called the push to make, that is switch outside your door. So like one, like the one in our top photo, then you probe the button, your finger pushes the two electric contact together to complete, that is to make the circuit. Then when you release the pressure, a spring moves the button back, but again, out, back out again. So the circuit is interrupted. Like uh, you can see that primitive bell there. Another type of uh, doorbells. We have already talked about the, the chamfer. Another one is the chime, the chime doorbells. The chime doorbells, I want you to look at the way they look like. That is the, the wiring of the, the chime doorbells, the left chamber. Those are the batteries that are used to energize the light jam. The right jam is there. The loose plastics for there for moving magnet hammer is there. So if this one works just inside itself without the circuit itself is there. So the wireless doorbell, we also have wireless doorbells. There are one big problem with conventional doorbells. So if you have a large house and you are off, you are often outdoors in the garden or yard, you may not hear them ringing. So one solution to that is to have a wireless doorbell which has a conventional push switch, push, push switch sorry, mounted on the outside of your door and a battery powered ringer unit you can carry from room to room or outdoors. So if you wish, the switch contains a, a, a miniature short range radio transistor transmitter that can send a signal up to about 10 meters. 
So that is a, a wireless doorbell. So doorbells are for apartment blocks, how they, they look like. You can now see these are examples of those doorbells that we are talking about. The head, the front of the door of an apartment block, and you will likely find a whole set of doorbells, one of each household. So it's not the most elegant bit of electrical engineering, but it works. So go on an older building and you'll be very lucky. You might just come across an elegant uh, antique uh, rotary doorbell, like the one shown here. So as with the doorbells described above, this one is a design. This one is designed uh, to be active, a simple uh, to activate a simple electric circuit that rings the bell inside someone's home. You simply turn the dial to point to the apartment number you want, and then press the button in the center which is, uh, it, it appears very complex, you can see here, it is one doorbell that is working, but they are interconnected in the circuits. So the moment, these are now apartments, now like for example, floor, floor one, floor two, floor 10, floor. So if I want a certain room uh, or a certain, uh, to, to, to ring a bell in somebody's house at a certain room, maybe I'm at the uh, gate outside there, then I, I'll just click the number and then ring that bell and it will de-energize de from where it is and go directly. It creates a circuit to the, to the exact house that I need the person to hear. So how do electric door entry systems work? Now, if you live in one of the upper floors of a modern apartment block, you probably have an electric door entry intercom or voice video phone, allowing you to let people into your building without having to intrude all the way down the stairs and back again. So systems like this don't have much in common with the traditional electric doorbells. Typically, they use an intercom that links a combined microphone and loudspeaker grill on the front door of the building to separate telephone-style handset in each apartment. So each handset has an extra button on it that links back to the latch of the front door. When you press the button, it triggers the relay. We have talked about that, which energizes the solenoid. Now, a type of electromagnet that pulls back the latch on the door, letting people see. Simon, Simon, switch off your microphone. Okay. So that is the electric doorbell and how the types of doorbells that we have and how they work. So I want us to go to the next slide, which is the bell indicators. And uh, the bell indicator circuit wiring. And uh, we shall be now almost finishing. how to wire the indicators. And for instance, I took a good example of a hotel that we use a typical example of how to wire the bells. So we know how to do the bell indicators wiring, meaning it is going to show maybe after I have pressed the bell. The moment it sounds, the indicator, all the lights also go on. So before we proceed, I want people to unmute their mics so that I hear what we have gotten from the past a lesson of uh, the doorbells and the electric bell in, at a whole, as a whole. I want to hear people talk because at least I've been talking. I want to hear if people are getting what I'm really saying. So unmute your mics. I'm waiting for people to unmute their mics. Yes, Kevin.
Francis. Yes, Nolin. They people don't want to unmute their mics. They are afraid of talking. Uh, hmm? No, go for it. Oh, now go for it, Sasa. Hmm? Say something before Kevin talks. Me check it in the electric bell. Huh? Huh? Yes, yes, Ulkuna Samaja. Oh, me and my skirt with electric bell pick. Oh, it was as a semi year, my number, you miss care. You can you miss care and not attack at least to Sam. I want people to, to adjust at least come out so that I hear if people are understanding. Oh, gonna push button so kifinya. The Belega current table, a lot of monomoid is in a creating a magnetic. Also, mm -hmm. there's a magnetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh, good. At least you got something. So somebody else to talk. Samuel. Yes. Say something. Uh. Young Melinda and Megua electric bell. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, you hold on the push button, mm -hmm. and it completes the circuit. Mm -hmm. current years ago, and I magnetize the iron core. Mm -hmm. You make the amateur, you pick a gong. Good. So you 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 uh, you exactly understood how the the electric bell circuit works. Yeah. Good. Grace. Yes. How are you? Mepotea msukumingi. I'm good. Yes. Tell us something that you've gotten from the lesson that we've had. Mm, I've learned about states of electric bell, electric doorbell. Like wireless mm -hmm. doorbell, can you have to me wires? Unless that me anywhere you unless I come look for a store and and about the electric bell in at me the principle of magnetizing. Oh, did you understand how the circuit works? Yes. Good. Uh -huh. Can I hear from somebody else again? Kevin. Yeah. Kevin Nonsongo, please talk to us. Kevin. Kevin, I'm a potato. Kevin, Kevin Nonsongo. Yes. yes. Please yes, talk William. to us. We are waiting for you. Yes, me have understood about the the. Huh? Yes. Hey, you guys are experiencing a lot of network challenges today. Mm -hmm. Kevin. Mwalimu ni hakata kata. Kwa ni network yako yiko na shida gani hiyo? Yes. Sawa. Sasa wewe tusikilize tu kama uwezi kuongea. Mwalimu ni kwa ushagonda ane. So to mute, let us mute our mic so that we go to the next slide. Mute your mic so that to end the next slide to Malize, our lesson today.
So I want, I want us to talk about wiring. And uh, I took a, a good example uh, of uh, a hotel. A hotel normally has the indicator, the, 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 a good example or application of how we wire the, the electric doorbells. Mute your mics. So we have uh, Boaz. Yes. Umekua off. Ulipu umeenda wapi? Ulipu watu mkua nasikiza. Alafu utaki kutuangelesha? Si ndo nikua angonja ni jibu sawa ujia uja. Nimeuliza mpaka nikaita Boaz. Sasa tuambia basi before nianze hii ya, ya wiring. Tell us something that you have understood from the previous presentation. Melewa kwa process of how working an electrical bell. Have you understood how an electric bell circuit works? Eh, hey, your process melewa. Oh, so well, now we are going to the wiring. We want to wire. And uh, I've said that uh, we are going to use a, an example of a hotel. So when you see the word hoteling, it's not that our uh, pekeake no wanatumianga indicators. It's only that I'm using that example so that we see clearly what normally happens. Now, like the bell indicator circuit is used where a bell and buzzers are needed to control from the different directions. So bell indicators circuit is also known as uh, known as hoteling a circuit where an electric bell is controlled from more than one location. So we have an electric bell being controlled from more than one location. So then we have that circuit. Now we need indicators to be used. So it can be used to find an exact location and room where the guest needs, needs the attendant help. So when a guest presses the push button, the specified, specified indicator in the room number starts to glow with a ringing bell at the hotel management and attendant panel. So the room, so the room, mute your mics. The room attended then attend the exact room specified by the indicator lamps we, where they, they seek or help. So this is a, a good example of uh, where a bell alarm, one bell alarm needs to use uh, to, to be attended by different rooms. So for example, now we have a hotel, a hotel that has rooms where people who, who normally use like uh, rest rooms. So maybe a, a certain room is given a, a, a bulb light number one, another one light number two, another one light number three with different colors. So it's normally there is an indicator panel. An indicator panel is normally at the entrance or where the installation of the bell circuit is installed. So what happens is, is the moment a, the, the, a, a certain a room or a certain person push, uh, pushes the push button in a room, it bring it indicates alarm, and the, the the attendant will exactly know that it is this room number that needs somebody to attend to it. So it's a very good principle. So there are one flow. So there is one flow in this circuit as if there is no one in the pantry. So they won't be able to, to know who need assistance from which room. So if there was one flow, you could actually not know. But now by the help of the indicators, for this reason, an advanced hotel wiring circuit can be made with the help of two, two numbers of normally open switches with 300 and 230 volts to 120 volt contact blocks for one push button, two, push, two buttons of normally closed push button, that is release buttons for that voltage, the same, same voltage. And we remember, we said that the normally closed button normally has a relay coil. And the, and the normally open 1.5 millimeters to wire for phase and the neutral. So the, this way, when a guest presses the push button, the indicator bulb and the bell will ring until someone in the reception switch off the bell and the indicator lamp by pressing the button, but, uh, button installed in the panel. Now, this way, it makes sure someone in the party is aware and going to attend the guest in the specified room. So it is a very good application. And you guys, now that you are electrical engineers, we are training you to, 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 
to know how to operate these things. You should come up with innovations. Come up with different innovations. You see now, like this one, the person who came up with this project should would be earning a lot of money because this is a, a, a project that came up to make it very simple for the hotel attendants to work to their clients. Now, this is now the wiring itself, the bell indicator circuit for hoteling, the wiring itself. Now we have the room number, room number one, room number two, room number three, the push button, the push button, the push button. We said the push buttons are normally open. And now the, the, the push button that are normally closed are normally next to the gong. That is the relay, meaning the, the, the work of the normally closed when it is energized, it holds the circuit, it, the, the circuit to continually, continually uh, uh, ring. And the, the indicators are there, the indicators are there. So for room number two, if the indicator is yellow, so the moment the, the, the person, this, this is now the room. The moment this person is in the room, the person presses the push button and it energizes the relay and the relay and, and the gong. And the moment the gong, the, the gong is here, it is, it, it, it is one gong used by all these rooms. So the moment it hits the gong, it will continually ring until this person comes to de-energize it at this point. So Kama will ring this color. This, For example, this is lamp number one, which is blue. So this person at the reception will de-energize by, 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 by pulling, by putting off the normally closed button by, by pressing it. So the moment you press, it de-energize. And by, that, by doing that, it shows that the person has already known that some, uh, some need is needed at this room. And they go and attend there so this is a very good way of operation so the components we have the mcbs the mcbs the miniature circuit breakers that are normally used and they have to be used we have the bell or the buzzer the buzzer is something that produces the sound or the bell we have the push buttons we have the light bulbs and we have the wire sizes sometimes we can even carry out the, this project in school and you can see how actually it does and when you are called to the field to do such a wiring you should be able to do it because they are easy things to do. Now, the contact, contact, uh, and the contact, the upper terminals of the push button switches, the first terminal of the indicator lamp or the bulbs. So connect the second terminal of all the indicator lights through the common wiring and wire them in the second terminal of the electric bell. So do the proper adding and grounding according to the local area codes so they're working how do they work now this is how they work i underline so that you you you, you realize that it's a very important thing so the bell indicator circuit used in the hotels and restaurants where the bell and the different color bulbs are assigned numbers to the lamps are configured in the panel installed in, and reserved in the reception so the indicator lamps and the bells are controlled from different locations by push button switches so for examples for examples uh -huh. when a guest presses the push button in room one the circuit completes which leads to glow the indicator bulb and bell rings so this way the attendant know the exact room specified by the assigned number of color the lamps and manage him accordingly. So the circuit below, the circuit follow the above sequence for these rooms, i.e. pressing any push button will complete the circuit. Bell rings and the, the bulb starts to glow. So the moment the bell rings, the bell, the, 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 the bulb also starts to glow. So you can see indicator one, meaning this person has already pushed So uh, the, the push button here. So the moment the push button has been energized, the indicator shows that is the push button two for room two, the push button three for room three. This is a very practical thing and very interesting one. So the, the another one push button there, the another one there. So you can see what happens there. These are different rooms still, room one, room two, room three. So when, when room two is on, room three cannot go on and until room three is room two is the energy is when you cannot all of them can uh, uh, you, you, you we, we, we are going to try and see now this one is energized now uh, room one is energized room two is energized room three is energized 
then the indicator is there. Indicator one, indicator, those are now the, 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 the lightings. Indicator one, indicator two, and indicator three. They are the push buttons that are used. So the bell indicators, now whatever we are seeing the other side is uh, about now the indicators in the rooms. Now outside the rooms at the control panels, you'll see this, this, these indicators. So the moment maybe room one, somebody presses, so the, the, in whatever will be seen on the panel, meaning at the entrance, will be these boards. So this one will be lighting as it continues ringing. So, so this person will be able to de-energize by pressing a, a, a button that is, will, will be there, so that it de-energizes that light. So, uh huh. Can you see that? Now, a single uh, indicator is there, the precise, the fine, the fine finish, and the long working. Uh, we can see now the final indicator there. And sometimes when you are doing, you, you, the, like for example, those guys who do their practicals, like now the certificate guys, the CE module two, they are normally given these bells and the indicators, and they are told to to wire the indicators. So the bell indicator, in order to meet the necessary necessities of the customer provide a, a wide range of the bell indicators. These products are highly known by the customers for their low maintenance and durability. So due to longer working life, these products are ex meet the client's demands. Okay. So we are done with that. So I would like guys to, to comment on what we have learned. We have learned. Now somebody to say something on what we have learned. Somebody to say something. We are almost finishing. We are almost finishing, we are in the last slide. And before we go there, I want guys to talk. Hey, people unmute your mics. Konya Muniski. Unmute your mics and say something. I'm seeing Grace. Grace, please say something. Grace? Yeah? Say something. About the bell indicator circuit wiring diagram, mm -hmm. we have learned that it is mostly used in in hotel. In mm -hmm. hotels, so that when the the so that you can the easily hotels. indicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Good. that when they are not, yes. Yeah. Yes. I've not heard what you said. The last point. I've said, mm -hmm. for example, when there is a problem in a room, someone mm -hmm. will just push the button. Then the mm -hmm. it will it will indicate. Mm -hmm. 
So and then the attendant will go and serve yeah. and serve the client. Yes. Do you think it is a good project for someone to do? Mm, yes. Yes. So I'm seeing people have not unmuted their mics. Let us proceed with the last slide. Now we are now on the bulb. Uh, Balgla alarm circuit. The Balgla alarm circuit. It is a circuit that uh, used now to uh, to now to to ring. These are these these are called sirens or the, the home security systems for the, all the police sirens. Now these are circuits that are normally used for so to to be able to make a, a sound or to be able to to show, to 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 indicate or to show any problem or to make some sound when there is any problem. So the burglar alarm system is an important part of the home security system. This burglar alarm project is based on the, the PIR sensor. You're going to use different sensors to make this circuit. Now the BIR sensor is used, uh, used here to detect the human body movement. Now, whenever there is any body, any body movement, the voltage at output pin changes. Basically, it detects the change in heat and produces output whenever such detection occurs. So you can uh, learn more about the PR sensors in the PR sensor circuit. So there are some useful features in the PR sensors, like how to change the distance range, how to set alarm duration and ETC. So you can see how it works. The type of IC used there is the UM3561 IC and is at the Cosmos LSI IC, which can generate four types of sounds, the police siren, the ambulance siren, the fire brigade siren, and the machine gun sound. It is generally used in alarms and toys. It is an eight pin IC and only require an external resistor to work. It has built and uh, it has inbuilt oscillators. That is the type of siren, and uh, the circular the, the security to produce the sounds. The UM3561 works in a range of three to five volts. Voltage higher than five volts can damage the IC. So if we are using it with other circuits or using a higher voltage source, a Zena diode must be connected to protect the IC. The output generated by the IC is not sufficient to drive the 8 ohm small speaker. So the, to amplify the output, the IC, a transistor must be used at the output pin. So the pin diagram, the pin description is given below. Now take, take it in the data sheet. So this is how to come up with the Balgra circuit. These are the components and the things that are used. The sound effect we, we need for the, uh, now the normally closed for the police sirene, the normally closed, that is the VDD for the, the fire brigade sirene. Normally here the alarms and even the ambulances, ambulance sirene, the, the, the normal, the VSS. These are the types of, of cords or nodes that are used when we are coming up or generating the alarms. They are called the, the alarms. Sometimes uh, you, you will hear that the, the alarms that are used by the ambulance are not the same ones that are used in machine guns. They are not the same ones that are used in police. They are normally different. So a Zona diode has a very great importance there. And just like other diodes, with only one difference, all the diodes allow flow of current in only one direction, that is forward. But Zona diode can allow current in reverse direction if the voltage goes beyond a certain limit. This voltage is called the breakdown voltage or the Zener knee voltage. So this property of Zener diode protects the, that IC by preventing the higher voltage supply. So we can see the circuit diagram there. The PR sensor is there to sense the motion. We said the work is to sense the motion. And then we have microcontroller there or the IC there, the speaker is there. And then the, 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 the bridge is there, the resistors are there to be used 
and the battery is there to supply the power. So the Balgra alarm circuit is very simple. Whenever the BI alarm sensor detects any human body movement, its output pin becomes high, which is connected to the, the this power supply pin. So the UMI, that I see, that type of IC activated and start producing sound with the speaker. So as I have stated, the above that the UM3661, that is the kind of IC that is used, does not produce much output in the drive to drive the speaker. So we need to connect a transistor to apply the current. So as long as the BIR sensor output pin would be high, would be high, the alarm that is the speaker will be continuously ringing with the sound produced by the UM3561. So we can set the time duration for the alarm by setting the BIR sensor, the time delay control regulator, you can see along as you want, as long as you want. So here should be noted that we didn't use the Zena diode because here is our circuit. We are connecting with the PR sensor output and the PR sensor gives the approximately 3.3 volts. So that is how it is constructed. Now, how does it work? I want to look at how the circuit works, the, how the bulgar the bulgler alarms work. Now, they're breaking the circuit. Other than the family dog, the, the most basic bulgler alarm is a simple electric circuit built into a, an entryway. So in any circuit, whether it is powering a flashlight or a computer, electricity only flows when you give it a path. When you give it a path, between two points of opposite charge to turn the electricity on or off, you open or close the path of the circuit. So to open or close the flash circuit, you simply throw a switch in the bulgler alarm. So the switch detects the act of intrusion and then opening a door or a window, for example, these sorts of alarm are divided into two categories. We have in a closed uh, circuit uh, system, the electric circuit is closed when the door is shut. We realize that the circuit is closed when the door is shut. So this means that as long as the door is closed, electrical, electric, electrically, electricity can flow from one end to the, another, to the other. But if somebody opens the door, the circuit is open and electrically and, and electricity can't flow. So this triggers an alarm. So anytime that there's no electricity flow in the circuit, it triggers an alarm and the alarm sounds. So if uh, in an open circuit, opening the door closes the circuit, so electricity begins to flow. So in this system, the alarm is triggered when the circuit is completed. There are a number of ways to build this sort of circuit into an entryway. So closed circuits, are normally a better choice than open circuits because an intruder can reactivate the open circuit by simply cutting the connected wires. So a magnetic sensor is closed in a closed circuit, consists of a few simple components for the most basic designs you need. So these are the ways that we can power, we can, uh, a, a battery powering is needed, then a, a spring driven metal switch built in the door frame the magnetic embedded door. And normally most of these uh, circuits, the Malgra alarm circuits are constructed in, uh, in uh, apartments that are normally, uh, we have the mansion, the, the, these big apartments that are normally constructed in big estates. We normally use this to detect if a thief has come. So the, the work of this circuit is to detect now that when somebody opens, tries to break into the window or the door, it's, it, it, it means the electricity, the current cannot flow and the alarm is on and the alarm is powered. So de detecting the motion. Now the motion detector emits the radio energy into the room and monitors the reflection pattern. So the motion detector emits 
radio energy into the room and motions and monitors the reflection pattern. So the, the circuit alarm are very effective in guarding the perimeter of the house, but they don't work so well inside the building. This is because the intruder's actions are highly unpredictable. You won't know where they are, they, they'll go or what they'll touch. A specific trigger isn't very effective. So to detect an intruder who is already in the house, you need a motion detector to detect that. So basic motion detectors are fairly common these days. You see them all the time in automatic doors, for example. There are several different sorts of detectors. So an automatic door opener is an example of a radar-based motion detector. So the box above uh, door sends out bursts of microwave radio energies and the ultrasonic sound waves and then waits for the reflected energy to bounce back so those are the motion sensors and many others now sounding the alarm now after it has detected the motion it sounds the alarm so there are several things as a security system might do to detect an intruder in an uh, uh, advanced system so the control box will need uh, will be wired on several different components. So typically, we'll activate a siren or uh, or other loud alarm noise, flash outdoor lights, and a telephone auto dialer. So the siren and the lights serve three functions. So the moment there's an intruder, it it normally it normally activates the siren. You will hear it sounding a, a very loud alarm. And then a flashlight on the door, you'll see some lights on the door. And another one, you'll, the, the automatic or telephone dialer will be there. And the owner of the property or the house will be called to be told that, that there is a problem or somebody has broken into the house. So it is a very safe way of managing the, the homestead or the property. So telephone dialer can dial the police directly play or uh, pre-record message giving the address of the house and any other relevant information. This message will, uh, will usually play over the, and over so that the police will still hear it even if a call is put on hold for some time. So the dial security company then that install the equipment, in this case, the control box, can feed specific information about the intrusion which circuits or motion detects were activated ETC. So the security company then relays this information to the police. So home security is rapidly growing field and there are new and improved bulbar alarm popping up at all the time. So for the most part, these systems are all built around the same basic structure. So the central box monitors several motion detectors and perimeter guards and sounds the alarm when it is triggered. So you realize that whatever we have learned today about starting from the electric bell to the indicators to, to the bulgar alarm and the circuit, these are things that uh, can, can really expose your field as an electrical engineer. Once you go to the market, you are looking for a job. You need to know that these are some of the areas that you can chip in. Uh, apart from going to look at the installation work in the field, these are some of the companies that you can apply to and you get the jobs there because these are areas that are very important. So up to that point, I want to hear some questions.